Google Sheets and ChatGPT are the world's most popular productivity tools. So we just have to make them work together. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT inside Google Sheets. And I have some incredible use cases to show you. The most common one, for example, is managing contacts inside Sheets. But we are on YouTube and I obviously do not want to show you actual data. So let's use ChatGPT to generate a list of contacts. In the first cell, let's type equals GPT table. And now I need to enter the prompt in parentheses. Make a fake list of leads, include their first, last names, emails, LinkedIn profiles, etc. Hit the return key. GPT table function generates tables from scratch. So you can create a financial report or even a grocery list. Here's a templated income statement and a healthy grocery shopping list for the entire week on a budget of $17. Here I even have calories and macros. Isn't this amazing? Hold your horses, very important. These functions are not available in Google Sheets by default. We'll need to enable them by using a Google Sheets add-on. It's called GPT in Sheets. Let me show you how to install it. Click on Extensions, Add-ons, Get Add-ons, and the app is called GPT for Sheets. You can just type it in search, GPT for Sheets. That's the one. Click on Install, Continue. Next up, we'll need to connect this plugin to our OpenAI account. This is done through an API key. It's like a password that allows the add-on to make requests to OpenAI. Let's do exactly this. Let's click on Set Your API Key. And then here we need to paste the API key from OpenAI. To do that, you need to go to platform.openai, click on Create New Secret Key, give it a name, Google Sheets Demo, create the key, and copy it to your clipboard. Let's go back to Google Sheets and paste it here. That's it for the setup. ChatGPT is not exactly free, but it is super cheap. Well, but how cheap exactly? Well, there's a really cool table, I'm going to leave it in the description below, which will show you how much it will cost for a thousand cells to be filled. For example, using this GPT 3.5 model. The funny thing here on the website, they even call it dirt cheap. Pricing will depend on two factors, the input length of your prompt and the output length. Here we have words per execution, price per execution, and then price per thousand. So to fill out a thousand cells using GPT 3.5 will cost us about 10 cents. They're cheap. But if you use a different model, for example, GPT 4, then pricing increases quite a bit. But the important thing, you do not need to use GPT 4 for simple tasks. So GPT 3.5 does a great job. More practically, let me show you how my costs look like. I can go back to this platform.openai.com webpage. You can click on usage over here. And this month I spend a total of just 11 cents. You can also click on the breakdown. For example, let's go ahead and pick June 17th. And there we have the breakdown of the usage. Back to the tutorial. ChatGPT has tons of very useful functions. I've already shown you GPT table function, but let me show you everything that's available within this add-on. Let's click on extensions. And here you'll see this add-on, GPT for sheets. Let's click on launch and enable. Here at the top, we have a list of GPT functions. The very first one is super simple. You just give it a prompt and it will give you the output for that prompt. This is GPT. Let's click on this first cell, type equals GPT, and then type the prompt, very important in parentheses. And you can type something like, uh, give me 10 random animals. Okay, and there we have a list. But having a list in one cell is not all that useful. So instead, we can use GPT list function for that specific use case. Let's type a GPT list and then type the same exact thing. List 10 random animals. Hit enter. And this function outputted each list item as a separate row. There we have our table function that I showed you earlier. We have format, edit, which is nice. It's going to correct grammar, tag, classify, summarize, and even translate. The most difficult part though, is getting your real data into the spreadsheet so that you can use ChatGPT to analyze it. There are two ways to do this, one from an app and the other one using a scraper. For the first use case, I want to get a list of all of my support emails in the Google Sheets so that I can analyze them and find patterns. To get that list of emails, I'm going to be using a Chrome extension called Bardeen. You can download it by following the link in the description. Here I have it installed. I'm going to click on the extension icon. And there we have a pre-built automation that will get all of the emails sent to a specific recipient in a Google Sheet. I need to type in the recipient. In this case, it's the support email and input the Google Sheet where the information will be outputted. 
I can pick an existing sheet or I can create a new one. Let me create a new one and call it support emails. Let's run this automation. Okay, a new spreadsheet was created. Let's click on view. And here we have all of our support emails. I'm going to select all rows, right click over here and resize them really nicely so that I can see more data. Okay, now it's much better. I'm going to clean up this spreadsheet a little bit and delete all of the rows that I do not need. Okay, perfect. Okay, there we have the subject line, the body of the email, date, the person who sent it. We can also open this email in a separate tab if we want to. And here comes the chat GPT part. Imagine I want to only go through positive reviews. I can use a function called GPT classify. And then as you can see, it doesn't show up over here because it's a new spreadsheet. So you need to click on extensions and launch the extension. Now let's go back to that cell, GPT classify. Here for each function, there are multiple variables that you can input. The first one is value. What type of value is it? Well, guess what? You can click on the dropdown and see the additional information. Value is input text to classify. So I want to classify the body of the email. Then I'm going to add a comma. And then there are categories by which this input will be classified. Uh, for categories, I can input something very normal, such as uh, positive, negative, or neutral. Those categories need to be a list of items separated by comma inside parentheses. And then you can input some additional information like examples, temperature, tokens. I'll show you what this means in a second. Let's go ahead and analyze our very first email. All right, the first email is neutral. We can just drag down the formula all the way. Okay, and just like this, we've classified our support emails. Pro hack for you, you can just name this column classify. For example, select the column and then click on filter here. And then we can go and filter everything that has positive in that email. So it looks like we have this many positive emails. This is super useful already. I can also use the summarize function to figure out what's inside those emails so that I do not need to read the entire thread. Let's create another column, call it summary. And here I'm going to do GPT summarize. Point to the body of the text. For the format, here we have an example. I want one sentence, very important, in parentheses. And let's hit enter. Okay, uh, Pardeen AI just announced the ChatGPT plugin. Super neat, drag it down. I'm happy. The second way to get data into your spreadsheet is by using a data scraper. It can extract information from pretty much any website ranging from Amazon to LinkedIn directly to your Google spreadsheet. For this example, let's imagine that we're running an e-com shop and want to analyze all of the reviews of a given Amazon product like this one. So if we scroll all the way down, we're going to see Amazon comments over here. So I just want to extract those comments and all of the relevant information and get them outputted as a Google spreadsheet. I'm going to be using Bourdain for this use case as well. And here I have a pre-built automation that will save Amazon products to a Google sheet. I'm going to click once, specify how many items I want to scrape. Let me get 50. So those are 50 reviews and pick a spreadsheet. I'm going to create a new spreadsheet and call it Amazon reviews and let's run this automation. If you want to learn more how to create custom scraper templates to get information from pretty much any website, I have a dedicated video for this. Make sure to check it out by clicking on the card over there. Okay, there's the spreadsheet. Click on view, just like this. Here we have all of the data. I'm excited, as you can tell. I'm going to click on add-ons and launch our GPT for sheets. You already know how classification works. So instead, I want to get the main advantage or disadvantage that's mentioned in this Amazon review. For this, I'm going to create a formula that will extract the information from the review. And based on the functions over here, I'm just going to use the simple GPT function. So let's type GPT over here. And then here I need to give it a prompt, but I also need to give a prompt that will also include the review itself inside the prompt. So I'm going to use another function, it's called concatenate. And all this function does, it combines two pieces of text, your prompt, the actual prompt, and that Amazon review. Select concatenate. And here, first I want to write the prompt, give me a one sentence summary, giving an advantage or disadvantage of the product. And then I'm going to add comma and point to that review. So 
this is the prompt that we're going to be feeding to that GPT function. And let me do another parentheses, hit enter. The main advantage is the adjustable torque setting. Pretty nice. I can drag down the formula all the way. Okay, and there we have our results. But ChatGPT is not the only artificial intelligence tool that I showed you in this video. Pardeen has also an AI feature that allows you to build automations by typing in a prompt. Let me show you. Let's open up Pardeen. And then here in the magic box, you can type something like scrape all LinkedIn profiles from search and add them into a spreadsheet, okay? And let's get it built with AI. Here's our automation. It has two actions. It's going to scrape information from LinkedIn and it's going to add new rows to a Google spreadsheet. And it's going to ask which spreadsheet you want to add the information to. You've already seen this automation many times. The only difference over here is a different scraper template. Let's click on done and go to LinkedIn to test it out. Here we are on LinkedIn profile search. I can search my second degree connections by company. For example, I want to find people who work at Google, my second degree connections, 9,000, okay. Uh, I can open up Bardeen from over here and run our automation. Let's click on this card, pick a spreadsheet. I'm going to create a new spreadsheet and call it LinkedIn profiles. And here I want to extract 30 profiles and let's run the automation. Okay, here's a spreadsheet again. With all of the information that I needed. Okay, so there's the name of the person, the headline, and the location. Phenomenal. We have a list of contacts, but if you look at the names, they're really inconsistent. We have uh, the first name and the last name is truncated. Then we have the first name that has some initials in between. So obviously if I send emails to those addresses, it will look a little bit off. For that, let's use a different ChatGPT function that's going to get us cleaned up first names. Let's launch the extension. And the function I'm looking for is called GPT fill. So it's going to take a look at the examples that you provided and it's going to try to follow those examples. So here, as you can see, ChatGPT will be reformatting the provided text. For example, remove the emojis. I personally have an emoji in my LinkedIn profile. It will make everything sentence case, remove doctor, so it sounds, again, more personalized. Okay, let's go ahead and use this formula. Very simple. Here we have the names. I'm just going to drag it over here and I'll call it cleaned names. And then manually, I'm going to process a few of the results. Uh, here we have Jenny, I'm just going to use her first name right there. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to use his first name. And then I'll find the results that look a little bit off such as uh, this one. And I'm going to just use these first two. Okay. And then I also want to provide an example of emojis being used. So let me add a random emoji. Let's do a zombie, why not? And then instead of this input, I'm just going to use the first name. Finally, I want to have an example similar to this one where we have everything in sentence case. Let's call it Naima like this. And then here we have the sentence case. All right. There we have it. There we have five examples. Let's click on equals GPT fill. Point to these examples. I'm going to click on the first name and the clean name, hold shift. And then the second part is what inputs they want to process. We obviously want to process these names. So I'm going to select this first one over here and holding shift, click on the last item, close, close the parentheses and hit enter. Okay, just like this, everything is cleaned up and we have first names for our email campaign. This is it. We've just connected ChatGPT to Google Sheets and I've also shown you some really cool automations. You can find the links to the add-on, the pricing table, Bardeen and the individual automations that I showed you in this video right in the description. And if you want to take your productivity game to the next level, make sure to watch this video next about how to scrape website data directly from Google Sheets. Right there.